by this point, we've seen the basic graphs that show a shift in demand or supply. We could have an increase, a rightward shift, or a decrease, leftward shift, in demand or supply. We studied the effect on the equilibrium price and quantity. Now we add a complication by realizing that in real life, multiple shifts may occur simultaneously. In this particular case, let's assume that there is an increase in demand and an increase in supply. Now by itself, the demand increase would cause an increase in equilibrium price and an increase in equilibrium quantity. Remember, the star notation means equilibrium. By itself, the supply increase would cause a decrease in P star and an increase in Q star. So you might have a pretty good idea of what happens to Q star when both of these shifts occur simultaneously, but the effect on P star is ambiguous, meaning we don't know what will happen. The end result actually depends on the relative sizes of the shifts. In fact, there are three cases we can draw. Let's get a starting graph drawn. So here we label our axes and draw supply curve S1, demand curve D1, equilibrium E1, price P1, and quantity Q1. We've drawn everything with the 1 subscript because we know that we're going to draw D2 and S2, which is going to give us an E2, a P2, and a Q2. And I'm going to make three copies of this graph. Notice that we will draw an increase in demand and an increase in supply on all three graphs. Once again, all we're going to do is change the relative sizes of the shifts. So on the first graph, let's draw a big demand shift and a small supply shift. Notice that when I draw S2 and D2, I'm going to use a different color to help see the results. So here our big demand shift and small supply shift, we notice the comparison between the points E1 and E2. P star increased and Q star increased. Now on the second graph in case two, we're going to draw a small demand shift and a relatively big supply shift. So we draw the graph and we get a slightly different result. In this case, P star decreased and Q star increased. So we've seen that the price could go up or down depending on the relative sizes of these demand and supply shifts. So on the third graph, you can probably guess what you're about to see. For lack of a better way to describe it, I'm going to say that the supply and demand shifts are going to be the same size. Or, more accurately, I'm going to draw the shifts such that the price effects cancel each other out. So when we draw the graph, you'll see that Q star increased, but P star remained the same, which I have shown on the graph with the notation P2 equals P1. So the end result is that with an increase in demand and an increase in supply, Q star increased, but the price effect is ambiguous. P star could go up, down, or stay the same. Looking at this, you'll see it was a lot of work for one problem. We had to set up three sets of axes, draw three different complicated graphs. Ain't nobody got time for that. But the good news is that there is a way to do this quicker using just one graph. So let's now show the problem using just one graph. Once again, we start with S1 and D1 drawn in blue, noting the equilibrium location, E1. Now in red, let's draw many different possible D2 demand curves. It could be a small shift, medium shift, or large shift. And we also now draw many different possible S2 supply curves. Once again, it could be a small, medium, or large shift. And any now of these new red intersections could be the location of E2. So we can shade in the entire area. So now we can note the comparison between E1 and this area that we've labeled E2. The entire E2 area is to the right of E1, showing that quantity will always increase. But E2 is both above and below E1, showing that the price could go up or down or remain the same. Finally, this example was just for an increase in demand and an increase in supply. You could also examine a decrease in demand and supply. Or perhaps a demand increase with supply decrease. Or even draw a demand decrease with supply increase.